Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name is Stuart and welcome to a painting tutorial. And this one inspired by my eight-year-old, funnily enough. The other day he was flicking through my old fifth and sixth edition Warhammer Fantasy rule books and was completely absorbed by all the miniatures in there and has since been looking through vampire counts and Tomb King um, army books and things. Uh, more on that on another video though. Um, but I was talking to him about how you may paint skeletons quickly. He's in a little bit of painting with his complete novice and, and definitely got a lot to learn. Um, but he was he was worried about how difficult it may be. And it got me thinking that I hadn't painted a skeleton for a few years um, and I wanted to look at a, a really quick and easy process for giving a very nice base layer and then how you might make that up to a more of a, a sort of a mid-range tabletop standard after that. So I thought I'll record it as a video and bring it to you guys. Now, the figure you see before you is from Highlands Miniatures. They produce wonderful STL files, wonderful in my opinion, STL files for useful alternative Warhammer fantasy armies. And obviously, you can use them in Age of Sigma and other fantasy games as well. Um, but it looks like they're very much aimed at uh, filling the gap and that is left by Games Workshop after they, they stopped doing Warhammer Fantasy. Of course, the old world is, is on the horizon and a lot. it seems a lot of people are looking at playing fantasy again, including myself. So I've had, been looking at their website an, an awful lot recently and I came across these and I actually joined their Patreon. Um, and this STL is one of the, the sort of the welcome pack free files you get. So I printed him off and, um, and set about painting him for this video. Well, I'm pretty new to printing and I've been using these miniatures as a way to get my printer dialed in a little bit and learn but that's that's definitely another story and another video but I printed this one successfully and I've primed the miniature black. Now I want to make this tutorial usable for people who, who don't airbrush um, you'll see the next stage I'm doing here is to provide a zenithal pre-highlight with the airbrush that's white top down on the miniature sometimes in an angle of about 45 degrees but basically leaving lots of shadow in the undercuts and this will help with the painting process if you don't use an airbrush by all means spraying white with a rattle can as your prime or a bone color is fine i think for the stages i'm using later i think actually using a brighter white helps um, but um, either way, if you don't have an airbrush, don't don't switch off now. The, the techniques used later on can absolutely be used if you prime with rattle cans. Now, if you have a white and a black rattle can, you can prime black as normally. And then if you're gentle, you can do a bit of a dusting over the top, but it is sometimes hard to control. So you may feel more comfortable just spraying completely white to start with. And there you see the miniature all primed. Now, for this angle with the with the daylight bulb bright in order for filming, you can you can see that it looks almost white. But if I just look underneath, you can see some of the darker shadows, and that carries over into the miniature for the method I've used. I have done a whole video on zenithal priming and underpainting, so I'll pop a little link in the video now. Now, first colour up is Contrast Skeleton Horde, obviously, we say. Now, I use an awful lot of contrast as glazes or as base coats over zenithal priming. Um, it gives a really, really nice, rich base coat, which you can use for gaming, um, which you can then highlight upon afterwards. I don't often just do a flat contrast colour, and at least not for the whole miniature. Um, and I was never a huge fan of using them the way they were advertised straight out of the box. But since then, I've become a really heavy user of, of, of contrast and of army paint to speed paints. And I'm looking forward to trying some of the other ranges as well. Um, Vallejo's looks very, very good. Um, but I do find over a, a Zenithal pre-highlight, you can get a really, really nice finish. Um, and it really, really saves that kind of base layer and gives you a really all nice shadow and mid-tone and a sort of subtle highlight to start you off with. Then if you go back and highlight afterwards, not only is it sped up those base layer stages, which will often take ages to put those flat coats down, um, it also produces a slightly nicer finish. In addition to that, I also find they tend to go on really, really nice and smoothly um, and a little bit easier control than, than standard paints. Um, you can take a little bit less care in, in some ways so that, again, that speeds up that base coating stage. So now we have Contrast Garrick Sewer. This is one of the newer uh, additions to the contrast range. It's fast become one of my favorites. And I'm actually going to be using that to do the wooden areas on the skeleton. So that is the, the shield and the spear. 
You notice over the pre-highlight that it already looks pretty good, giving some natural shadow and highlight there, so there's very little need doing afterwards um, unless you really wanted to. Now on to contrast Saigor Brown. I'm going to be using this for the leather areas of the miniature. So he's got a big fat leather belt um, that's slightly overlapped and runs around the miniature. Now for Contrast Blood Angels Red, and I'm going to be using this on the fabric area. So he's got something that looks a little bit like a loincloth and the little flag that is on the spear. And to finish off the base coats, I'm using scale colour, so scale 75 black metal. And that's just on the spear tip, the rim of the shield, and a few studs that are on the leather belt. And just to give a little bit more depth to those metal areas, I'm using a little bit of non oil. This is the new. Um, version of it. I actually quite like the new version of, of non oil, probably more than I do than the, the Agrax Earthshade. The new version of non oil um, doesn't pull quite as much, which is really good for just very, very subtly shading the metal areas. Now, that looks pretty good. Um, you could base him now and get him on the table with hundreds of his friends and it would look fantastic. Um, so if you want to stop here, you absolutely can. Now, for the rest of the video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to add a few highlights and tart him up to a slightly higher tabletop standard. So first up, the really obvious one, I'm going to be using some model colour off-white, and I'm going to be very subtly dry brushing the raised areas of the bones. Um, I'm using one of the posh dry brushes here um, from Artis Opus, but you can, you can pick up um, similar models from, I think, Army Painter now. Um, I think War Bases have, have got their own range, and they definitely find them slightly better than your kind of standard dry brushes of old. But some makeup brushes and things like that are also fantastic as well. So uh, use the tools you're most used to. And I want to highlight that red. Now, there's a little bit of uh, natural shadow and highlight from the pre-highlight, but I'm using Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. And I'm just picking out the raised areas. for Wild Rider Red just for those final little touches. Using model colour saddle brown, I'm going to highlight the leather belt. I'm just going here around the top and bottom edges. For the first highlight on the wooden areas, I'm using model colour flat earth. with the top highlight being model colour English uniform. To highlight the metal areas, I'm using Game Air Silver. I'm really just trying to catch where the light would reflect. Now it's time to work on the base. I'm going to go quite simple um, and I'm going to start with Vallejo Earth Texture and this is Dark Earth and then this is kind of like your Citadel Sterling Mud kind of stuff. A little bit lighter in texture, but you get a massive pot for um, only kind of double the price that you get the, one of the small pots from, from Games Workshop. So if you aren't using these already, I absolutely recommend them. They've got a whole range of colours um, and they have lots of other effects and things which we'll, we'll use one in, in a few moments later. 
Now, once that's dry, I want to give that a wash of Agrax Earthshade. It doesn't really matter what formulation you use of these. I'm going to be adding pigments to the base afterwards, which tends to cover a lot of it anyway, but it just gives a bit of shadow. Now, once dry, I'm going to brush in some pigments, and it's Vallejo Pigments Light Sienna. Now, um, this I'm not going to seal with any kind of pigment sealer. All I'm doing is trying to add texture to the base. I brush it in, blow it off, and you'll find that um, it stays in there. It doesn't fall off. Now for Vallejo Thick Mud. Now this is more of uh, an effect than a sort of a basing texture. Um, if you apply this really thick, the mud looks wet. If you leave it a little bit thinner, it, it just looks like changes in texture. But I'm just uh, applying a few little different areas on the base there just to add a little bit of variation. Quickly add a few tufts. Then a bit of Game Air Black to the rim. Now for a final gory touch, blood for the blood god. Just want to add a little bit of blood on the end of the spear, maybe a couple of smears on the on the shield and a little patch on the floor. Um, less is more with this kind of thing. You don't want to make it look like um, my son probably would if he didn't, would he'd slop it all over. Um, but it does add a, a little bit of extra kind of um, grim darkness to your miniature, which I think is always a little bit of fun. And there we are all done. It's been loads of fun doing this. Um, obviously just a sort of fairly, fairly mid range tabletop standard, but it looks pretty cool. And if you had a whole unit of these, I think it would look quite impressive on the table. I also think it looked pretty cool just at the sort of standard contrast level um, and doing that pre-highlight definitely aged that a little bit with the, the shadow that's built in um, on the bone and on the sides of the, the skull there. Much of that tone tonal change there isn't just the contrast paint it's it's from that pre-highlight but i still think it would look cool if you just sprayed your model white and, and, and use the same techniques as well so if you are following this as a tutorial use use the methods that you have the tools for um, and pick out the techniques and the things that uh, that suit you um, you don't have to follow everything stage by stage now there's a good chance you may be new to the channel um, watching this. Um, this is the first Warhammer Fantasy miniature or, or related video on the channel at all. Um, there are some a, a few bits of Middle Earth strategy battle game on the channel, but I tend to use the channel mostly for historical wargaming things. Um, but do check out the other videos. You may well find something that, that interests you. Many, many moons ago, I actually sort of started with, with HeroQuest, really, but Warhammer Fantasy was the first game that really, really attracted me. And it seems to, it may be having the same effect on my son, which I'm incredibly excited about. Um, and he's potentially drawing me in, along with the old world on the horizon, to looking at um, rekindling my nostalgia for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Now, there will definitely be some other videos on the channel in the coming months, and they may well be just kind of one-off painting to tutorials like this for a while have a, a lovely um, swamp goblin from Highland Miniatures Night Goblin um, which um, looks really really fun so I printed one of those uh, the welcome pack files off and I will um, probably do that as a tutorial just because it's a miniature I really want to paint and I've been printing some dwarves as well for a, a potential army for myself and I'm sure there will be some painting tutorials and videos around that so maybe worth subscribing for when those come out over the coming weeks and months and if there's anything you'd really like to see related to Warhammer Fantasy, please do pop it in the comments. Um, I do take notice of what people put in the comments. I try to reply to everyone. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And um, what do you think of the tutorial? Do you like the skeleton? Um, do you like the way it turned out? How do you go about painting yours? So I'll let you guys go now. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give us a like. It really, really helps us out. And as I said, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more like this in the future. Take care and I'll catch you soon.